the heartland of Australia is facing a crisis. Recent years have seen an influx of outsiders moving into our suburbs after being forced to flee their homes due to horrific fighting with landlords, bond authorities and developers. They are left with little choice but to take their chances in another land. They're often risking everything they have, every worldly possession, with a man with a van. You heard that right. One single man in one single tiny van. All in the hope of finding a better life in a cheaper suburb. But the suburbs they're travelling to are the traditional homes of Melbourne's migrant and refugee populations. Reservoir, Footscray, Sunshine, Springvale, the list goes on. But upon their arrival in these new lands, their troubles are far from over. We visited one such suburb where tensions are at boiling point. These students and musicians, they come here in all their man with a vans. They don't contribute anything to ordinary refugee society. They just take, take, take. Take all the seats at all our cheap restaurants. All they want is our authentic laxas and dumplings. And then they tell everyone about it. On all their websites and newspaper supplements, the next thing you know, all their friends and families are showing up on our doorstep, wanting a table for six people all wanting the same luxa they read about on the weekend. Enough is enough. Stop the vans. Stop the vans. Stop the vans. Stop the vans. At a recent rally, angry words were exchanged between traditional refugees and some of the new white privileged suburban settlers. You don't know what it's like where we come from. Some of us, we have to work for two weeks just for one month's rent in a bedroom in a Northgate share house. We're rooted here. You commuted here. All you refugees just need to be a bit more accepting of our culture of moving into areas with cheap, simple eateries and replacing them all with trendy, overpriced bars and cafes. All these artists, musicians, these students, individually, they're all right but they're never alone. They're always in groups. You let a few in and then more and more come. And before you know it, your suburb is overrun by real estate people and developers and people writing articles about trendy suburbs. Gus is a community leader of his suburb. He and his family were refugees from a country ravaged by war and horrific abuses of human rights. He asked to speak with us to voice the concerns many of the people of his suburb have. You have to understand that what we want is diversity and tolerance. And that is why we have to stop all these educated, enlightened, culturally sensitive Australians from arriving in their vans and their smart cars. I know it may be a controversial thing to say, but these people it's in their nature to raise the rent everywhere they go even if they have good intentions well i don't care that's not my problem the fact is they can't help themselves it's in their dna to raise the rent you see this everywhere everywhere they go all throughout history you read the history books it's the way they have always been just last week in the house next door to my house, a nice young couple moved in. He works in uh, some multimedia and she makes her own jewellery and plays in a band or something. And they share this house with a student who works part-time at a homeless shelter. When I saw that they were such nice, friendly, open-minded people, I turned to my wife and said, Oh well, there goes the neighbourhood. And so what do we do to solve the suburban refugee problem? Some suggest putting them on an island or gentrification centres where they can raise the rent behind bars. One thing's for sure, it's a problem that's showing no signs of going away. Damien Lawler, Lime Champions.